my talk today, we would like to explain you or illustrate to you why we think that we are in AR are extremely exciting fields to work in and why this industry is going to change our daily lives professionally and also in, a, in our private daily lives. Please take a look around you. You can turn around, you still see everything, everything without any borders. Look at your smartphones, these supercomputers, but still limited by the vision. You will not see more than maybe like 10 centimeters length, five centimeters width. And in VR, this is going to change. You're wearing a uh, HMD and head mounted display, a headset which really m enables you to turn around and to see a full new world and to be really immersed into it. So your brain can really start to believe that you're in a new world. And don't believe that it's just the vision which makes that happen. It's also devices which make you feel, which make you smell, which make you taste, and also touch. So in virtual reality, you can look into other people's eyes without even traveling. You can meet people on other continents. You can really save time on traveling, on money, on flights, on trains, and spend more time with your family, with your loved ones, with your friends. And that is in the end what technology should be about, to make us plan our time more efficiently and to enable us to do more of the things we enjoy. So when I was younger, I was still using these very bulky, uncomfortable phones, which couldn't really do more than sending SMS <laughs> or calling someone. Today, I have like a little smartphone in my hand, which can help me in all my daily life and which is the world became unthinkable of to live with. The same is happening with VR headsets and AR headsets right now. Today, we have devices, tethered devices actually, which are, um, which are the best ones currently, but which are still limited. They are very bulky, uncomfortable to wear. You need to clean them and um, be very hygienic with them to change them around with your friends. In the future, in a few years, the development will be, as with the smartphones, we will have devices like maybe lentils or even glasses, which you can just use to um, float into new worlds. As you can see, last year, the development, the investments uh, in, into VR and AR have been highly increasing. There is one company which stands out, Magic Leap, which has been invested almost two billion now. And uh, also you see that there is a lot of investments in various vertical industries in VR and AR. So we're re we are really right now at a turning point for this industry. So what we are seeing right now, it's called the fourth transformation. After the first one where PC and the second one internet and the third one mobile got to mass adoption. So which industries, which verticals are we seeing are, um, are mostly using VR and AR right now? For example, for traveling, you can choose a country and just travel there without even moving. You can treat your phobias, your mental illnesses by exposing yourself to sweats, which are not really there, but you can get your s yourself used to it and uh, really limit the effects it has on your daily life. Next VR, another big company is already filming and streaming VR events so that when you want to see or go to a concert like Coldplay just like two months ago actually did a concert in VR so you can even go on stage almost touch the singers and experience it well. Also real estate, of course, you can just buy properties in other countries without even going there again or you could just try out new furniture for your home and, uh, and see how it looks like.
Rahel explained about the background of virtual reality and augmented reality. As you see here, there is a virtual gastronomy waiting for us, in addition to other verticals like real estate, live events, manufacturing, uh, even automotive. And here, as you see, it really makes your five senses working in a virtual world. And imagine what could be achieved even with this technology. How about remote dining? How about space food? How about adoption of children eating? So as you see, even one project in virtual reality and augmented reality could change the world. And here, this is just one example that a company startup could be able to achieve. But what if you, as an entrepreneur, as a developer, could start working on specifically one industry or one field that you are already working on? So it is about how you adapt, align the transformation, the immersive transformation of VR and AR. There is another example that we would like to show you. What if you could be able to work in this kind of an environment? Of course, it's a virtual environment. But the difference is the first experience that we show is virtual reality, which you are actually inside a virtual environment. This is actually you are augmenting the physical world with your own glasses. So as we mentioned, these companies, startups, has just started working a few years ago, and they are already uh, valued more than a few billion uh, euros or dollars. So we believe that the industry is growing rapidly, and as a developer, as an entrepreneur, you could still be part of it. So when we look at the current VR, AR market, it all started last year in on March. And uh, then the headsets go out from different companies. Everyone is very excited. And they, they really think that it will dominate in maybe one year uh, to as a mass adoption. And uh, the headset companies make some sales numbers and they make predictions. But it, ha it didn't happen that way. As um, Rahel mentioned, there are several limitations. There are several technological advancements that should be made before reaching to mass adoption. The first one was the hardware itself. It was a little bit bulky, and it is not easy to, to uh, use. But it is normal, right? Because in the mobile era, we started with these bulky phones as well. So it is the question now, 
how we will be part of this innovation process from a bulky equipment to a much more user-friendly device or even a glass or even a lens. And the other thing is, of course, every, every time, in order to drive hardware, you need content. You need really flagship content to drive your hardware. So right now, there are many developers worldwide already starting to create different experiences, different virtual reality or augmented reality experiences for these devices. But it is not enough. We have to find the killer app, right? And you probably have witnessed Pokemon Go that really dominate the whole world. It is actually the small portion of like augmented reality that we have seen. We could do uh, many things. As you see here, it, some of them are a little bit, maybe look sci-fi, but it will happen. Maybe not now, but tomorrow. So when we look at where we are going, we should look at what is the ultimate experience that we are seeking for. For VR, it is two criteria which is really critical for, for a perfect virtual reality experience. The first one is indistinguishable virtual senses, which could affect all of your five senses. The second is self-consistent virtual worlds. So whenever you enter that world, your brain thinks that it is, it is living in a, a real environment. What is the ultimate AR experience that we are talking? Still indistinguishable virtual senses. But now you have to adapt the virtual objects into the real space, real environment to your life, as you see in the um, office space, which becomes a little bit chaotic afterwards. But in addition to that, there should be a seamless integration between these virtual objects and the real world so that you couldn't even understand which is virtual, which is real. That is the, that is the main part of it. So when we look at all of these things as VR first, we, we really believe that this could only be achieved with the power of crowd with the power of innovation, with the power of crowd-based innovation. So we believe that if people who are innovating in different areas could come together and work on that, we believe that we could achieve the sci-fi goals maybe in a shorter time or in an efficient way. We could do that. And in order to achieve that, open innovation and crowd-based innovation is the key. So what we are trying to achieve right now, we are working with several companies to, to enable them use power of crowd to make the streamlined VR, AR experiences. And on the other hand, we are working with uh, different universities to create labs, to create labs so that they could create innovative projects with the help of crowd. So it is all about democratization of these new technologies, because these devices are unfortunately a little bit expensive now, which is completely normal for, for the early stages of a, um, of a technology. But at least we have the chance to bring these devices to some university environments. So, at the end of today, we have uh, several ideas. So we have to achieve that. How we will achieve with the companies? There are many companies right now opening open innovation challenges. We urge you to really be part of these innovative challenges so that you could maybe define the future of these technologies. What is important here is we believe that if we use the power of crowd, we could really make a difference in terms of lowering the costs of development and making a much more efficient development process. And of course, at the end of the day, the, the product or solution will be much more diverse than you are doing uh, by yourself. So the last thing that I would like to share with you is, again, the using usage of uh, 
uh, crowd, but on a funding level. As you see here, companies started to discover crowd-based sourcing, funding, and uh, blockchain crypto technology is also one part of it. When we look at the new startups, they start using this technology to make sure that they are not only using the power of crowd for innovation, but for funding opportunities as well. What if these two forces come together and achieve you to the ultimate VR and AR experience? Thank you.